Okay, so I was actually establishing or explaining that in, in letter writing, if you are going, in writing test rather, if you're going for the academic route, that you're going for study, your task one, your task one is called report. But if you're going for, this is for the academic test takers. But if you're going for the general training test, your task one is actually letter. There are two different things, right? So you need to know this so that when you go for the test, if you enrolled for the academic test and you are served a letter question, you should be able to tell them that this is not what you're doing. <coughs> now, whichever it is you're doing, whether you're going for the academic test or the general training, your task two is actually called essays. So everyone gets to write an essay. Mm -hmm. So remember, you have two tasks. You have to write the essay, you have to write either letter or report, depending on your own subscription. Now you need to understand that your task one is supposed to last for 20 minutes. And the minimum, minimum number of words you have to write is 150 words for task one. But the essay writing, you are to spend a minimum of, sorry, maximum of 40 minutes. You have to spend 40 minutes. And out of these 40 minutes, or within these 40 minutes, you are expected to write at least 250 words. You're losing mark. Because you need to understand that your task one gives you 33.31% of the total ma um, rates you get from writing tests, mm -hmm. while your essay gives you 66.69%. So it's more than twice what you get from task one. It's more than twice. So what does this mean? You need to do, put in a lot of effort in your task two. That doesn't mean you should discard that task one, no. But don't channel your efforts at or in, on your task one because that's what you're fighting for, and you are you you cannot be hundred and one percent sure that you're going to skip it, scoop in the whole test three point three percent, right? So I tell people, putting a lot of effort in your task two, in a worst scenario, you are able to scoop in about fifty percent out of the sixty six point six nine percent. If you can get this from here, and out of this, you're able to get between 20 to 25% out of this, then at the end, you're having between 70 to 75% over 100. This should give you an A, right? Hmm. We press the Now, to have a good essay, there are factors you need to work on. There are things that will help you to produce a nice or an excellent essay. One is your lexical resources. Two, your grammar. Your grammatical range. as well as the accuracy. Three, you have to also look at your task cohesion and coherence. Then lastly, you have to ensure you achieve what we call task achievement. 
Then, while you are writing also, additionally, what helps you to produce an excellent or a fantastic essay in would be, one, your creativity. Your spontaneity. Right. Now, let's look at each of these one after another. When it has to do with lexical resources, we're talking about vocabularies. There is nothing you can do if you don't have good vocabularies. You just end up repeating the same words in every sentence. So IELTS is looking to see how you are able to make use of vocabularies to express yourself, showing off synonyms. Hmm? And it's not just about vocabularies, but advanced advanced ones. So IELTS says avoid overly or commonly used words and expressions. Avoid them as much as possible. So how do you avoid them if you have advanced vocabularies? So rather than writing that her parents actually traveled to the UK yesterday. You can express that her parents actually embarked on a trip a few hours ago. Right? So everyone can say traveled, right? But in a way, you have sh you've, you've shown a little bit of advanced knowledge or exposure by saying embarked on a trip. Right? Now, IOT says also. You need to avoid ambiguous words. Or ambiguous words. While the excuse me. Okay. Why there is the emphasis on avoidance of commonly and overly used words? Advising for advanced words. You also need to be careful to avoid ambiguity. So how does ambiguity come in? When you make use of certain words that have multiple meanings, and you just drop the word in a sentence, you are not sure if the examiner is aware of the meaning that you have of that word. The examiner might know the other meaning of that word. Why do you know another meaning? So when you make use of that word in a sentence, using the own meaning you know, which makes sense in that sentence, the examiner reading it has a different meaning that he or she knows or has of that word. So to the examiner, this is what we call malapropism in English. The wrong use of words in a context. Do you understand this? So in that situation, what you've written does not make sense to the examiner. So who has lost it? The test again. So when you use certain words, <laughs> that's, that's the irony of English. When you use a word such as this, very simple word, I use it often. This guy here is a very simple word, but highly ambiguous. Highly ambiguous. It can mean up to three or four, it can give you up to three or four minutes. Just one word. If tomorrow be your birthday, we shall be present at your birthday, we shall present a present. Even though the news broadcaster may uh, present the news. See different meanings. So, we shall be present, spelling, we shall present, spelling, a present, it's the same spelling. So, when you use this word in a sentence, how sure are you? that the examiner knows that meaning that you know. What if the examiner knows the other meaning? Right? So you are jeopardizing the, 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 the meaning you want to pass across in that sentence. So IELTS says, ensure to avoid ambiguity. Go for words that are very precise in the context you are passing. Please, don't forget this. So now, there are some, so many words. Okay, here, yes. I'll be present, I'll be in attendance, right? I'll present, I shall gift you, or I shall offer you, right? A present. Or a gift, or a token, right? 
So instead of repeating, I'll, I shall be present at your birthday and I'll present a present to you. They're yeah, just for me, right? Right, so I have says go for words that are very precise in the context you're passing. So you wouldn't have to somebody say you go explain, explain, explain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so just drop the right words that are self-explanatory. That's what matters. <laughs> then another thing is, in as much as you want to achieve advanced vocabularies, do not go for turgid words. Don't go for turgid words. Turgid words are those high sounding words. They may be very precise. They may have just a single meaning. But you are the only person that knows the meaning. You. So you want to act like Honorable Patrick. The Kring Krum Kranku. The Higi Haga. The Gagatu Gaga. All these words. Who am I? Who is about it? Right? So I have said, don't go for such words because you will not be there to tell the examiner. Actually, the Gagatuan Gaga means a situation of, right? So you have to be very careful. So build your lexical resources so you are confident about each word you're using in the context. You know that it's actually passing the exact meaning you intend. So what you need to do in building your lexical resources is bringing in synonyms. Don't forget, build your synonyms. So when you find an advanced word, try to get a synonym of each word. So that if you express the word in a particular sentence and you want to repeat the same word in another sentence, you don't use or you don't use that same word, use the synonym. Right? So that you don't you don't constitute repetition. Right? Okay, now when you have built the synonyms, you have gotten a list, a long list of vocabulary. Please ensure you know their meanings. When you find their meanings, ensure that you identify how they are used in the written English as well as the spoken English. Because when you use the spoken English to write a formal article or assignment, a lot of what you write will be slang. When you use spoken English in writing, in a formal context, a lot of what you've written will sound as will sound very will sound like very much like slang. So when I tell someone, "Hello, Mr. President, this is um, Ben calling to actually acknowledge 